These pigs could one day provide a nearly endless supply of organs to save humans. Kidneys, hearts, livers. It's called xenotransplantation. And what you are watching at this research facility has never been seen by the public before. We usually try to limit this to only the staff that takes care of the animals. We very rarely let other folks come in. Right? Mike Curtis is my guide today. He is CEO of eGenesis. That's a company devoted to raising pigs to try and solve the organ shortage crisis. Everything's controlled, like all of the feed is clean, water's clean. As you can see, the staff is clean. We try to maintain a very clean environment here. And I should just point out that I walked into a room, turned on a filter, essentially cleaned the air for five minutes before I could then go shower. That's why my hair is wet. I've, I've washed myself. I put on everything new here, including underwear, socks, shoes. Everything is different just to be in this room. Gives you an idea of just how clean it is in here and how important that is. It's more than I typically do to prep for the operating room. All of it to protect the pigs from us. I got to tell you, I did not know what to expect. <laughs> it's powerful just to be here with these pigs. These two and those three and the little guy here, they're fully edited. All these piglets can carry a total of 69 edits to their genome. That makes them among the most genetically modified mammals on the planet. How much change has to happen to that, that pig genome in order for it to actually become more compatible with the human? Our approach is really three-pronged, where we're trying to reduce the risk of, of disease transmission from the porcine donor to human. We're editing in a way that reduces or eliminates rejection, and then we add genes to control rejection. They do all of this with the help of CRISPR, the gene editing tool that allows scientists to manipulate the cell's DNA, knocking out or adding in genes, in this case to make a pig's organs more compatible with the human recipient. To keep the consistency of the genetics, we establish the cell line and use cloning to produce consistent donors. It's akin to what was done with Dolly back in the 90s, cloning. It is essentially a modern day assembly line of standardized, genetically modified pigs. We've selected the Yucatan mini pig because fully grown, they're about 70 kilos, 150 pounds. Right, so the organs are correctly sized for a human recipient. You know, it's kind of amazing. As much as we talk about the really intricate science of gene editing, ultimately you got to get the size right. That's right. Less than 1% of the people who die every year die in a way that they could ever even be considered um, as organ donors. And so even if you optimize everything, there still wouldn't be enough organs. In the vascular wall. Dr. Robert Montgomery is the director of the Transplant Institute at NYU Langone Health. He's also the recipient of a heart transplant. I had a heart transplant five years ago. I had seven cardiac arrests, and I still wasn't sick enough to be able to draw an organ. That experience became a rallying cry for him. We need a sustainable, renewable source of organs from something else other than humans dying. Are animals the answer to that? I think animals are the answer to that. Specifically, pigs. Besides the size similarities, pigs also have several piglets with each pregnancy, making them a quickly scalable source of organs. One day, you might even see facilities like this all over the country. We've been doing research on xenotransplantation for decades. Pig organs into monkeys and doing gene edits and that work has progressed. But there was still this question of are those results translatable to a human? Had we learned everything there was to learn about transplanting these organs into non-human primates? I think there were diminishing returns. The problem was the FDA still wasn't ready to give the green light to transplanting a pig organ into a human being. So Montgomery proposed a provocative idea. What if the first human recipient was brain dead? Their heart's still beating. They can be maintained on a ventilator and you can really see what the human response is going to be. On September 25th, 2021, Montgomery performed the first ever genetically modified pig kidney transplant into a brain dead human. And it worked for 54 hours. But each time they tried, the results got better and better.
We've done this five times. The first four, two kidneys and two hearts were just for three days, but this last kidney was for two months. A much healthier look. He and his team shared the findings from their last patient with me. See that red? Yes. That's hemorrhage. We did have a mild rejection, and we were able to test to make sure that we can treat that, you know, using sort of conventional um, anti-rejection drugs. Then, in January of 2022, for the first time in history, a team at the University of Maryland Medical Center transplanted a genetically modified pig heart into a living human being, someone who was not brain dead. It was allowed by the FDA's compassionate use pathway for experimental treatments, something used when a patient has no other options left. Right, a patient imminently facing death, why wouldn't you try? But how far are we still to this becoming a reality? I think for the right patient, we're gonna see it in the next couple of years. Oh, it's, it's amazing. Pigs that could save human that. lives. So these are large whites. These are the sows that we use to do the embryo transfers in. You know, I, I never expected to feel like I was immersed in a really scientific sort of place hmm. in the middle of a, of, a, of a pig barn. There's the equivalent of five or six Nobel Prize discoveries. Cloning is one of them. The discovery of CRISPR is another one. Allo transplantation, all Nobel Prize winning discoveries. We're integrating all of those to make this a reality.